Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here and hope you guys have an awesome day. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing two main reports with you guys. The first report states that the percent of people who believe that now is a good time to buy a house has reached an all time record low. A second report that I'm also gonna be sharing with you guys today shows that we have a big decrease in the number of people submitting loan applications to buy houses right now. So the first report I wanna share with you guys today is according to Fannie Mae. This is a monthly survey that they conduct regarding uh, people's sentiment regarding the uh, economy as well as the housing market. So according to the survey, which is just published on the 7th of June, uh, it states here that only 17% of consumers report it's a good time to buy a home. And interesting enough, 99% of these people were real estate agents. Not just kidding. <laughs> I'm only kidding. So what they basically did is they surveyed approximately 1,000 people. They do this again on a monthly basis and they reported the following here. It says, surveyed consumers continue to express concerns about housing affordability with the good time to buy indicator reaching a new survey low as 79% of respondents reported that it's a bad time to buy a home. So according to Doug Duncan, who's a Fannie Mae's a chief economist, he had this to say, consumers' expectations that their personal financial situations will worsen over the next year reached an all-time high in the May survey, and they also expressed greater concern about job security. And he went on to say the following, that these results of this uh, monthly survey here suggest to us that increased mortgage rates, high home prices, and inflation will likely to continue to squeeze would-be home buyers. What they're also saying is that potential sellers are locked in with very low mortgage rates. Uh, a lot of people have mortgage rates of less than 3.5%, whereas current mortgage rates are around 5.5%. So what we're basically seeing right now is a combination effect. We're seeing home buyers uh, dropping out of this housing market, but we're also seeing a lot of people not listing their houses for sale because they have very low mortgage rates. Of course, every housing market is different though, right? We're seeing a big increase in the number of new listings, for example, in Boise, Idaho and Yuba City in California, for example. But overall, across the United States, housing supply or the amount of houses for sale has been slowly increasing and not increasing at great rates. Therefore, because we're seeing this lack of housing demand and also uh, we're not seeing a big increase of housing supply, this is supporting uh, Fannie Mae's forecast that home sales will slow through the rest of this year and into next. In any case, here's more of the results that they did in their survey from last month. So again, only 17% believe it's a good time to buy a house, whereas 79% believe it's a bad time to buy a house. On top of this, uh, the amount of people who said it's a good time to sell actually increased uh, from 72% to 76%, whereas only 19% believe it's a bad time to sell a house. So the vast majority believe it's a bad time to buy a house, and also the vast majority believe it's a good time to sell a house. In regards to home prices, the percent of respondents who say home prices will go up in the next 12 months actually increased from 44% to 47%, while the percentage who say that home prices are going to go down actually decreased to 23%. Also, 25% believe that home prices will be the same in 12 months from now. In regards to mortgage rates over the next 12 months, only 4% believe that mortgage rates are going to be going down from current levels right now. Uh, whereas 70% believe that mortgage rates are going to be going up. I also believe that as well. For job losses, 81% are not concerned about losing their job over the next 12 months, while the percentage who say they are concerned increased from 11% to 16%. So this a percentage here is still very low, but that's a big increase from 11% to 16%. By my dumb math, that's about a 50% increase compared to one month ago. In regards to household income over the next 12 months, uh, the vast majority believe that uh, their household income is going to be about the same in the next 12 months. Okay, changing gears slightly, let's talk about mortgage demand because this is a big headline that a lot of people have been commenting on my channel regarding. So CNBC is reporting here that mortgage demand falls to the lowest level in 22 years amid rising rates and slowing home sales. So let's talk more about this because this 22 year low really has to do with their total index regarding refis as well as purchases. So what they're referring to in this um, headline here or this article here is what the uh, Mortgage Bankers Association or the MBA uh, just reported yesterday at the time of this video. So they said that mortgage applications decreased 6.5% from one week ago. And this is for the week ending June 3rd, uh, 2022. So when we're talking about a 22 year low, we're really talking about what's called their market composite index. That's a combination of uh, refis as well as purchases. So that's a measure of mortgage application volume or mortgage loan application volume. So total mortgage application volume, which again include refis and purchases. So this uh, market composite index, 
is composed of their refi index as well as their purchase index. So as you guys all know, their refi index has been tanking because mortgage rates have been increasing greatly. So refis a decrease by 75% um, from one year ago, whereas their purchase index actually fell greatly, 18% compared to the previous week, and also was 21% lower than the same week one year ago. So according to Joel Kahn here at the NBA, weakness in both purchase and refinance applications, again, these are for loan applications, pushed the market index down to its lowest level in 22 years. The purchase market has suffered from persistently low housing inventory and the jump in mortgage rates over the past months. These worsening affordability challenges have been particularly hard on prospective first time home buyers. So the best way to share this with you guys is to have a look at this. Here's our composite index, which again is comprised of refis as well as purchases. As you can see here, ever since really of February of 2021, their total composite index has been decreasing. And interesting enough, mortgage rates reached all-time record lows in January of 2021, and their composite index has been decreasing really ever since then. However, because we're seeing a big decrease in refis as well as purchases, their composite index is at its lowest levels since the year of 2000. And here's their refi index, which has been declining more or less ever since uh, August of 2021. And interesting enough, uh, in early August, we also reached near record low mortgage rates when we had uh, rates at approximately, what, 2.75%, 2.78%. Um, as of July 19th, 2021. In any case, as you can see here, let me get rid of the uh, mortgage rates here. As you can see here, their index has been decreasing greatly ever since mortgage rates have been increasing during this time frame as well. In regards to the total number of people submitting loan applications for home purchases, which again is their purchase index, it has been decreasing more or less ever since January of this year. And the current levels we see right now are the lowest levels since April of 2020. So what we're basically seeing right now is a big fallout in refis, which of course is given because mortgage rates have been increasing so much, but also a big decrease in their purchase index, decreased 18% compared to the previous week, and also down 21% from one year ago. That's big, big decreases. And one reason, of course, is because of rising mortgage rates, which at the time of this video, which is the 9th of June, the average for a 30-year fix increased to 5.57%. A 15 year is at 4.88%, a 30 year FHA is at 5.12%, and also VA, a lot of people ask about VA loans and also the rates currently at 5.12%. So as you can see here, take a look at this chart here. The average for a 30 year was approximately 3.3% to start this year. But as you can see here, ever since really the end of May, mortgage rates have been increasing greatly. So right now, current rates are at 5.57%. Uh, the highest number we've seen since approximately on May 6th of this year when rates were at 5.64%. Here's something very important that I also want to bring to your attention as well. So here's the National Association of Realtors' reaction to mortgage rates right now. It says investors are concerned about inflation and the impact of an upcoming half percentage point rate hike from the Federal Reserve next week. So here's what they're referring to regarding this um, half a percentage point a rate hike by the Federal Reserve that's expected. So this is according to investing.com. If you actually Google Fed Rate Monitor Tool, you'll take you to this website here. So the Fed is going to meet in six days um, from today, which again is uh, the 9th. Uh, they're gonna be meeting on the 15th of June. So right now the federal funds rate is in the range of 0.75% uh, to 1%. So what the uh, street is forecasting for rates to increase by 50 basis points. So that'd be for the target range of 1.25% to 1.5%. And that's at a 93.5% probability of a 50 basis point uh, rate hike. But here's what the National Association of Realtors had this to say, because I'm seeing a lot of comments with people saying that uh, the Fed is going to be increasing uh, the federal funds rate by 50 basis points, and this is going to cause uh, mortgage rates to increase greatly as well. But that's not really the case here because um, have a look at this here. It says the upcoming rate hike again in six days from now will likely have a smaller impact on mortgage rates this time. When the Fed raised its short-term interest rates in March, mortgage rates surged about 80 basis points or 0.8 percentage points in the next following three weeks. As a result, the 30-year rate rose from 3.85% to 4.67% by the end of March. However, when the Fed raised rates more aggressively in May, again, they increased the federal funds rate by 50 basis points, mortgage rates increased by less than 20 basis points, and then rates fell to 5.10% by the end of May. Thus, the data shows that the effect of the Fed's rate hike 
on mortgage rates was smaller in May than in March. So what they're saying here is that mortgage rates increased more back in March uh, compared to May, even though the uh, federal funds rate was increased more in May compared to March. And the best way to share this with you guys is to have a look at Uncle Fred's website here. So as you can see here in March, they raised the federal funds rate by 25 basis points. And when they did that, mortgage rates increased greatly, as you guys all know. And when they increased the federal funds rate by 50 basis points in May, it had a less of an impact on mortgage rates. And here's a key takeaway here. It says, it seems that mortgage rates have already priced in some of the effects of the upcoming, keyword there, upcoming Fed rate hikes. So in other words, the market is already pricing in these future rate hikes that are planned by the Federal Reserve. So the Fed increases the federal funds rate by 50 basis points in six days. That should not have a big impact on mortgage rates. And according to the National Association of Realtors, although mortgage rates will continue to rise in 2022, don't expect to see the same sharp increases that the market experienced in March and April of this year. Mortgage rates will likely average 5.6 to 5.7% by late 2022. And meanwhile, the yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note is standing at just over 3%. So comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value out of today's video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.